There's no space, there is love can reach. There is no place where we can find this. There is no way to raise in Take me with your arms spread wide. Take me back and forth in the chat.
I want to sign your name and look to stay But no, my heart was true Let my life song started why don't you take a second to pause this video get your Bible if you don't have it and check out the description section to get all the materials you'll need for today's lesson including class notes all right and before we jump into the lesson let's take a quick second to pray dear Lord thank you so much for giving me the ability to have this time with people while they're at home Lord for giving our church this ability to reach people from home um, while people are still nervous to come in and be together in person because of COVID. Lord, I pray that you would continue to guide parents at home on how to handle these situations with their kids and guide us all on how to just move on with our lives as normal as we can, Lord. Father, I pray that you would keep us all safe and healthy and help us to grow closer to you during this time, Lord, as we jump into your word. I pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, so make sure you have those class notes out, and we'll jump into today's lesson. Um, so the Israelites were living in the promised land, but after Joshua died, they abandoned the Lord and they ignored his commandments. 
This sin began a cycle that went something like this. The Israelites would sin against God, disobey him, worship the idols that they created, and then God would become angry and he would punish them by bringing enemies against them. The Israelites would cry out to God to forgive them and God would raise up judges to deliver them. The Israelites enjoyed peace and rest, but it wouldn't take long until this cycle would start all over again when the Israelites would fall back into idolatry. This cycle of trusting God and then following idols, praising God, and then falling back into bad habits would happen for 300 years. So let's look at number one in our class notes. In Judges 6, what sin did the Israelites commit that brought God's punishment? A. Coveting. B. Disobeying parents. C. Idolatry. Or D. Stealing. Good. C. Idolatry. The Israelites continued to just make idols instead of worshiping God. So God was merciful to hear the Israelites' cries for help and to deliver them from their enemies even when they continued to sin. And the judges that God raised up to help the people were often called upon to lead the people into battle. And these leaders had doubts and fears, just like we all do all the time. So in today's lesson, we're going to see how God chose a leader who started out afraid but learned to trust God. So now, um, if you'll take out your Bibles, we're going to read Judges 6, um, verses 1 and 2. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian for seven years, and the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. Because of the Midianites, the children of Israel, is, the children of Israel made for themselves the dens, the caves, and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So what steps in the cycle do we see in verse 1? We see steps 1 and 2. The Israelites sinned against the Lord, and 2, the Lord sent enemies against them, the Midianites. So the Israelites sinned, God brought in enemies to punish them. Where were these enemies from? Midian, that's right. The Midianites were herdsmen from the east. They were so numerous and became so powerful that whenever they came to Israel, the Israelites couldn't even stay in their homes. So where does verse 2 tell us that the Israelites lived since they couldn't stay in their homes? Right, they stayed in dens in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. The Israelites could no longer live in peace. Every time they planted crops, the Midianites would come against them and take everything they could. All of their food in the fields, all of their animals, the Israelites were left with nothing. So how many years had the Midianites terrorized the Israelites? Seven years. This was a long time to go hungry and to be in fear for their enemies. Finally, the Israelites cried to the Lord for help. God sent a prophet to tell them why they were being oppressed by the Midianites. And it was because they had forgotten the miracles that God had done for them. Bringing them from Egypt and giving them their promised land. They had turned from God and they worshipped the, the false gods of the Amorites. So now let's look at number two in our class notes. Who were the enemies that God sent against Israel? Was it A, the Edomites, B, the Egyptians, C, the Midianites, or D, the Moabites? Good, it was C, the Midianites. So now let's read Judges 6, verses 11 to 16. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty men of valor. 
Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. So let's look at these verses a little closer. Who in verse 11 came to Gideon? The angel of the Lord came to him, and the angel of the Lord is God appearing in human form to Gideon, so we could call him Jesus. What was Gideon doing at that moment? Refer to Judges 6.11 for the answer to this question. Gideon was beating out wheat at that moment. So beating out wheat was another, another term for threshing wheat or getting all the grains off the stem. The grains were then ground into flour to make bread. Notice where Gideon was threshing his wheat. In a wine press, Gideon was hiding the small amount of wheat that he had from the Midianites. A wine press was where people turn grapes into wine, and it probably wasn't the season for grapes, which is why the enemy wouldn't think to come there to steal anything. So Gideon was hiding in a wine press, trying to save himself and his food. And what did the angel of the Lord say to Gideon in verse 12? He said, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Um, so does anyone know what valor is? Valor means great courage, especially in battle. What did Gideon ask the angel of the Lord according to Judges 6 verse 13? He asked, why has this happened to us? Where are the wonderful deeds of God? And now if we look at Judges 6, 13, the end of the verse, what did Gideon think the Lord had done? He thought that God had forsaken or forgotten them and that he had given them into the hand of the Midianites. They thought, he thought that God had given up on him and his people. But the Lord hadn't forgotten. He was standing right there, ready to do something about this problem. So now if we look at Judges 6 verse 14, what did God tell Gideon to do? He told him to go and save Israel. Yeah, so who was sending Gideon on this quest to go save Israel? The Lord. And when the Lord sent him to do this, how did Gideon react? What did he think of this idea? Did he agree with it? Did he like it? Look at verse 15. He wondered how he could save Israel. He was the weakest from his clan, Manasseh, and he was the least in his home. Gideon, Gideon could not believe that God was sending him. What did the Lord assure Gideon of in verse 16? He said he would be with Gideon. Gideon would defeat the Midianites. Do you remember what sovereign means? God in his sovereignty chose to use Gideon. Gideon was not mighty or courageous when God came to him. In fact, he was close to despair because of the Midianites. The Midianite attacks had shaken Gideon's trust in God. But the Lord promised to go with Gideon and give him victory. The victory would belong to the Lord, not to Gideon. So let's answer number three um, in our class notes. What was Gideon doing when God called him to lead? Was he gathering an army, hiding in a cave, planting a field, or hiding in a wine press? 
good D, he was hiding in a wine press. And um, we see that first, God gave Gideon a test of obedience. He told Gideon to tear down his father's altar to Baal and to replace it with an altar to the Lord. Gideon knew the men in his city would be angry if he did this because they worshipped Baal. But he gathered his servants at night and did what God told him to do. The next morning, the men were angry and wanted to kill Gideon, but God protected him. Gideon obeyed God in his hometown, but he would face a bigger test against the Midianites. The Midianites invaded with a huge army and camped in the land of Israel. Their army had 135,000 men. The Bible says they spread out along a valley like grasshoppers in abundance, and their camels were like sand on the seashore. They were a frightened sight to the Israelites. I'm sorry, they were a frightening sight to the Israelites. What do you think they were there for? They were there to attack the Israelites and steal all their food and belongings. They probably thought this time would be like all the other years when they came into the land of Israel, stole whatever they wanted, killed anyone who stood in their way. But this time, God was fighting for Israel. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, and he blew the trumpet to call the Israelite men to him. Men came from Gideon's tribe of Manasseh, and from Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, 32,000 men. This was a good response for so many Israelites to come, but they were still outnumbered about four to one by the Midianites. So how do you think Gideon felt when he looked at their numbers? He, for, he began to doubt his calling. He asked God for a sign to show that he was with him. Gideon placed a fleece wool on the ground outside and asked God to make the fleece wet with dew, but keep the ground surrounding the fleece dry. Although Gideon's faith was weak, God was compassionate to give him the sign he asked for. The next morning, Gideon's fleece was soaked with dew, enough water to fill a bowl, but the ground around it was dry. But Gideon was still filled with doubts, so he asked God for another sign. This time, he wanted the fleece to be dry, while the ground surrounding the fleece would be wet with the dew. The next morning, God sent dew on the ground, but kept Gideon's fleece dry. And at this point, Gideon knew that God was with him, and he set out for battle with his 32,000 men. Let's look at number four in our class notes now. What did Gideon place on the ground to test God? Was it a bowl, a cloak, a fleece, or wheat? Good, it was a fleece. See, Gideon and his army were ready to obey God, but the Lord had a different plan in mind. So now let's read Judges chapter 7, verses 2 through 7. And the Lord said to Gideon, The people who are with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel claim glory for itself against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now therefore proclaim in the hearing of the people, saying, Whoever is fearful and afraid, let him turn and depart at once from Mount Gilead. And twenty-two thousand of the people returned, and ten thousand remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, The people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that of whom I say to you, This one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And of, whom, and of whomever I say to you, This one shall not go with you, the same shall not go. So he brought the people down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone who laps from the water with his tongue, as a dog laps, you shall set apart by himself. Likewise, everyone who gets down on his knees to drink. And the number of those who lapped putting their hand to their mouth was 300 men, but all the rest of the people got down on their knees to drink water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, By the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So 
God stopped Gideon with more instructions and was about to make his army smaller. So take a look at verse 2. Why did God want to make Gideon's army so small? Right, so that God would get the glory for victory, not Gideon for his army. God told Gideon that his army was too large, and if Gideon were to win the battle with 32,000 men, the people would boast that they had won the battle by themselves, without God's help. And God did not want them to think that they were the heroes. God wanted credit for the victory. So who did God tell to return home? He told all the men who were afraid to return home. And how many were afraid and left? Look at verse 3. 22,000 men were afraid and left and went home. So how many people did this leave in Gideon's army now? Right, just 10,000 men. The army was still too large though, and God was going to reduce the number of men even more. And where did God tell Gideon to bring the army in verse 4? Right, God told Gideon to bring them down to the water. The next test had something to do with how the men would drink the water. Those who drank the water from their hands and lapped it up like a dog were chosen to go with Gideon into battle. How many men put their hands to their mouths and lapped water like a dog and were chosen to go into battle with Gideon? Look at verse 6. Right, 300 men. Only 300 men were left. And what did the Lord tell Gideon about these 300 men in verse 7? God said he would give victory over the Midianites with these 300 men. With such a small army, the Israelites would know that the victory wasn't because of anything they did, but that the victory was definitely the Lord's. Now let's look at numbers 5 and 6 in our class notes. How many men did the Midianites have in their army? Was it 13,000, 32,000, 135,000, or 500,000? The Midianites had 135,000 men in their army. And how many men did Gideon take to this battle? Was it 300, 10,000, 22,000, or 32,000? Good, A, just 300 men to battle against the Midianites of 135,000 men. What will happen in this battle? How can 300 Israelites win against 135,000 Midianites? Follow along as I read Judges 7, verses 16 to 22. Then he divided the 300 men into three companies, and he put a trumpet into every man's hand with empty pitchers and torches inside the pitchers. And he said to them, look at me and do likewise. Watch and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets on every side of the whole camp and say, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outpost of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just as they had posted the watch, and they blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers that were in their hands. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the pitchers. They held the torches in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands for blowing. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And every man stood in his place all around the camp. And the whole army ran and cried out and fled. When the three hundred blew the trumpets, the Lord said, Every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. And the army fled to Beth Acacia, towards Zerera, as far as the border of Abel Mahola by Tabith. So Gideon divided his 300 men into three groups of 100. What three things 
did he give them for the battle? Look in verse 16. Right, he gave them trumpets, empty jars, and torches. Gideon's men probably wondered about these items. Where were the swords or spears? Where were their weapons? But they took these odd weapons and followed Gideon to the edge of the Midianites' camp at night. Then they waited for Gideon to blow his trumpet. Who remembers what the people were instructed to shout when the trumpets blew? Look in verse 18. For the Lord and for Gideon. And in Judges chapter 7 verse 20, what did they do on the night of the battle? Good, they blew the trumpets, broke the jars, raised their torches and cried a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. This is incredible. This would have been frightening for the Midianites. During the night, they heard trumpets and shouting, and then when they looked around their camp, they saw torches surrounding them. So what happened to the Midianite army? What did they do? Look at verses 21 to 22. Yeah, they ran and cried out and fled. They turned their swords against one another. God made the Midianites panic and think that the Israelites were in their camp. So the Midianites started killing each other. Then they fled. Gideon and his men pursued the fleeing army and men from the other tribes, tribes came out to help. The Midianites were defeated. What a battle. God wanted the glory for this victory, and he would get it. No one could say that 300 men with trumpets, jars, and torches could defeat such a vast army of 135,000 men all on their own. This was a great miracle showing God's deliverance. Now, let's look at numbers 7 and 8 in our class notes. Why did God reduce Gideon's army? A. He didn't want bad soldiers. B. He wanted the glory for the victory. C. He knew they were afraid. Right, it's B. He wanted the glory for this victory. And what items did Gideon and his men take to battle? Good, A. He took jars, torches, and trumpets. Gideon was afraid to follow God at first. He was hiding from the Midianites when God came to him and called him to lead. He doubted that God was even with him, but Gideon and his men were obedient to follow God's instructions, even though they didn't seem to make any sense, and God was faithful to protect them and give them the victory. Gideon became a mighty man of valor and led Israel as a judge for 40 years. Today we learn that God chose Gideon as a judge to deliver the Israelites. Gideon was threshing wheat, hiding from the Midianites when God came to him. And Gideon was not a mighty man, yet God chose him. He wanted Gideon to lead the army, and he wanted the victory to belong to himself alone. God loves using his people to accomplish his purposes, and he did just that. Gideon followed God's instructions and defeated the Midianites with, with only 300 men. The New Testament tells us about another man that God used to accomplish great things. I'm talking about the Apostle Paul. He dedicated his life to preach the truth about Jesus and started many different churches. Paul was also used by God to write much of the Bible. So listen as I read these two verses from Paul. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verses 9 and 10. For I am the least of the apostles, who am not worthy to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So what did Paul say about himself there? He said that he was the least of the apostles and that he was unworthy. And why did Paul think of himself as unworthy? Because he persecuted the church. Um, so what does persecuted mean? So 
So he was persecuting Christians, people who loved Jesus. This means that he was putting Christians in jail, arresting them, taking them from their families and hurting them. He hated Christians. And this is the man that God called to do his work and accomplish his purposes. Paul knew that he wasn't worthy, yet God gave Paul something, something that helped him to accomplish God's purpose. What was it that gave Paul the strength to do the Lord's work? Let's reread verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. So what gave Paul strength? The grace of God. God alone, through his grace, accomplishes his plan. Yet he does use people. He used Gideon. He used Paul. He will use you if you're obedient to him. If you feel scared or unworthy, that's okay. Gideon was scared. Paul felt unworthy. But God will give you the grace and the strength to follow him. He changed the frightened Gideon into a courageous leader. He changed the angry Paul into a courageous preacher. And he can change us too. So that's all for today's lesson. And, you know, remember that through God's grace, we can do anything. We don't have to be scared and we will get strength through his grace and his love.